said in the Bible. There were a lot of declarations Jesus said, uh, which are recorded in the Bible. You know, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the resurrection and the life. And so there are many. But there is one very important one in the Bible. Uh, can anybody guess without Vicky? Because you might have seen my <laughs> photos. <laughs> So can anybody guess? There was something Jesus declared. This was just before he got arrested, actually. Does anyone know what he said just before he got arrested? It is I am to do with I am. Okay, no problem. It's all right. Jesus said that uh, he is the wine. Mm -hmm. I am the wine. Hallelujah. And we are the branches. Uh, in other words. So my message for today is uh, I am the wine. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And always Jesus used uh, metaphors and he tried to connect with the, with, the, with the time that he was living in. That's why he was talking about the fishermen. He was talking about the, the, the agriculture aspect of things. Uh, he said I'm the bread of life because he could, he could make sense to the Jewish community or the people. Uh, about the bread being the very important part as their diet. If uh, Jesus was in Pakistan today, he would have said, I am the chapati or roti or I am the naan bread. Hallelujah. Uh, so Jesus was trying to connect. In today's terms, Jesus would have said, maybe I am the Facebook. Connect to me. I'm the Facebook. He could have said, I am the WhatsApp. He could have said, maybe I am I'm the Twitter. So, you know, he tried to connect. So this, these are the things that we need to learn in our lives as well as we develop. And as we will be given opportunities to preach sometimes in the home group or on the streets or in the church or wherever, that we can try to connect to, to the people. When he was talking about the, 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 the aspect of uh, being the bread of life, uh, because the Jewish culture very much is, is to do with bread. They, they, they love bread. They eat bread for breakfast. They eat bread for lunch. They eat bread for dinner. Bread is there all day on the table. So when Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, he didn't, they didn't think, oh, what is he talking about? You know, Because they knew the bread was their main diet. That was the thing that they could connect with. And also, uh, Israel is, uh, is, is full of wines, grape trees. And so when he was trying to talk to <coughs> the Jewish community again here, he was, he's talking to the, the Israelis, he, he is connecting with them and he's saying, uh, in John, in John chapter 15, he say, he's saying, I am the true wine. Now, uh, make a note of that. He's saying, I am the true wine. There are many other wines that we can get connected to. But Jesus is saying, get connected to me. I am the true wine. Because uh, there are a lot of uh, things out there that are, that are similar to or equivalent to the wine type of situation, attracting us to... Uh, to different things, taking us away from God, the distractions of this life, the temptation, the addictions, toxic relationships, and a lot of other things that are taking us away from the true wine. Mm. But Jesus is saying, I am the true wine. So the first thing is that we must remember that He is the true wine. If we are not in the true wine, then we have a big problem. And there is a, there is a, a, a image of a wine which is dry which is very dry, this one, this one, this one, this one, yeah, so this is a wine which is very dry, and you can see it's, it's dead, there is no, no fruit on it, and so Jesus doesn't want us to be part of something like this, he wants us to be a part of something which is something nicer there, which is full of grapes and a very healthy uh, wine, you can, you can show this one, or you can show that one, uh, whichever one, so he wants, he wants us to be part of something like this. He doesn't want us to be part of something dry, something stale, something where we will not have a direction and a purpose mm. and a meaning to life. And he's saying, I am the true wine. Hallelujah. Mm. So that's the first thing. My father is the wine dresser. So our foundation is in our father and Jesus Christ has been sent for us. So that we, when we connect to him, which is the Father's agenda, which is the Father's plan, then we are going to be bearing lots of fruit in our life. Now, 
I found something very interesting in the Bible in this chapter, which I had never seen before. And it talks about three levels of fruits because it does say about fruit. Everybody remembers that, isn't it? But I will show you from the Bible, which for me was very interesting as I was preparing this. Uh, there are three levels of fruit. And I believe that these are also the three different stages of a Christian when we are connected in the wine. And we will look a little bit about the wine as well and how it works. And we'll talk a little bit about the sap, which is also very important for a plant, uh, uh, which probably most of us know we have all been to school. Uh, so Jesus says here in John 15, uh, one, again, I'm the true wine and my father is the wine dresser. And then uh, he says in verse 2, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, now listen, uh, he takes away and every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says here that every branch, every branch is in the wine uh, <coughs> that does not bear fruit. So in other words, we are actually supposed to be bearing fruit because otherwise there is a consequence here. And uh, it says he takes away. Now the Greek word for the taking away is is actually there is one method of uh, wine wine planting and I think I don't have a picture for you. Uh, it's it's a, yeah this one maybe this one yeah it's called cordon I think it is called cordon which means the wine is planted in such a way that as it grows the the, the shoots or the canes have to face outward okay so when jesus was trying to explain this that every branch that is not bearing fruit will be taken away so basically what what it meant was it was not going to be cut off in that sense because there's another word for cut off but but this is the <laughs> word which is which is uh, which is uh, where is that cut k a T H A I R E in the Greek, which means it would be made straight because it had to be straight for, for maximum potential. So whichever shoot would just go down, it would be made straight. So in other words, it was not going to be destroyed. That is what God wants to do with our lives many times. And when we are not bearing fruit in some of the areas in our life, he wants to straighten us up. Hallelujah. He's giving us a wake up call. Hallelujah. He's shaking us. It's time. It's time now to do something about your life. It's, it's been too long. You have been just very, very relaxed. Come on, let's just uh, make it straight and let's get the fruit in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is trying to encourage us by saying here that we need to be stepping up <coughs> so that when we step up, then there will be fruit. So you see here that we have got uh, fruit. Then in the same scripture, we got more fruit. So when we come into Christ, our life, our salvation itself is, is a product of, of sort of a fruit. But when we, are st we, when we start coming to church, then we start a little bit, I believe in some ways, we start bearing sort of more fruit because then it, the level becomes a little bit different. We become a part of a body and like you here tonight, it's not just you're blessing yourself, but by you coming here, you're a blessing to the other. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the beautiful things about wine is, if you can go to another image, uh, I had written down on a piece of paper num uh, numbers and according to that, the images, but I left that paper at home. So, uh, because you see, I have numbered them, but I forgot. Uh, uh, this one, it's not a very good picture, but again, again, there is a tendency of, of the branches to try and curl into the other sides of the, the, the vine itself. In other words, they try and support each other. They rely on each other. They depend on each other. If I, have, if I can use uh, these two brothers here. So it's basically we are trying to just sort of uh, relying on each other. We are strong together. Hallelujah. So we are strong together because if I'm going to fall, he's going to catch me. If he's going to fall, I'm going to hold him. And the same thing with Sunny. Yeah, hallelujah. You can sit down now. No, I'm <laughs> so, so there is that beautiful thing about the, the, the church and the body that we are a blessing to each other tonight here. 
Hallelujah. This is why you need to be coming Amen. here every Amen. every uh, Wednesday, uh, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Amen. groups have been on Wednesdays. Amen. So that's on my mind. Anyway, so we are like those branches that will support each other, that will help each other, that will protect each other, that will uh, strengthen each other. So Amen. you coming here t uh, tonight is not just that you came here because uh, oh it's just a Tuesday night. No, you are your presence here is blessing somebody here. You are bringing your fruit here to show your life as a testimony Amen. that you are diligent, you are disciplined, and you are committed to the group. Hallelujah. Amen. And somebody else is encouraged. I'm encouraged. When I entered, there was few seats, uh, uh, you know, not taken. But when these guys started coming, uh, of course, I was late. I'm sorry for that. But this guy came and then, uh, I forgot your name, sister. Dolly. Dolly, Dolly came and then Shehzad came. And everything is now sort of uh, full, isn't it? Yeah. I felt encouraged. Amen. I said, wow. Of course, when you preach and when you have more people, that is an encouragement in Amen. some ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, putting that aside, it is nice that uh, the, the seats are full up here. That is Amen. a bigger Amen. number. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are like that. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So we are called to bear fruit. But not just fruit. We are called to bear also what? More fruit. As it says in verse, verse 2. But there is also there is something else in this verse, which I will read again. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That is, he straightens up and uh, he makes it sure that uh, it is in the right place for, for it to bear fruit. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear much fruit. So God wants to prune us. Hallelujah. Pruning is very important in, in a wine. Unless and until you don't prune a wine, it will not be give its best mm. and pruning is not easy because there is a tool there mm. there is a tool that needs to be used and there are seasons when you need to be doing the pruning as well and so it's just like God trying to operate us sometimes when we need operations when we need a sort of cleansing maybe we need something to be taken out of our life and then the Holy Spirit will try and you know just point uh, 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 to us, this is the area of your life you need to do something. Let's cut it off. You know, it's going to be painful. Not precious, uh, painful. Do you have a pray, uh, pain? Not precious. Pain? Pain? <laughs> 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 <Not just joking. laughs> we pray at the end. So, when when we go through this process of pruning or or sort of uh, uh, disciplining, when God tries to do that, it is not very healthy. Uh, so it is healthy, but it is not uh, easy. It is a painful time, and it's beautiful to know when the the when they do the pruning, uh, if you go to the picture again of the, the thing that I showed, the cordon and the shoes, this one. Uh, they say that you have to just cut three inches and leave two buds. That's what they do every time. Leave two buds and cut up to the three inches of the shoots or the canes. So that then it becomes more stronger. And the, the, the more uh, mature the wine is, the more better grapes you get mm. so it takes when you plant a wine it takes a, around good three years to for the first produce and so sometimes we need to be patient with ourselves we shouldn't be running into things god when are you going to do this i've been praying god today you have to answer my prayer no just like the wine just be patient and the the once the fruit starts coming in then every year then the, the it kicks in, it gets better and better and better. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what we mature in the Lord, isn't it? When we are in Jesus Christ, we start maturing more and more and we become more and more like Him. And the fruit that comes afterwards is becoming more and more beautiful, more and more perfect in a way, more and more lovely, more mm. and more sweet. Hallelujah. Amen. So the best wines, if you want to drink or uh, uh, if you want to buy whatever other wines that has... The wine is W-I-N-E, okay, not the V-I-N-E now. The, the drinking wine, let me say it that way, is actually the one which are, which are uh, actually uh, uh, where the mature, uh, uh, comes from a mature wine or grape, grape, grape tree or grape, grapes. Hallelujah. Amen. So the longer it is there, the better the fruit and the better the wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Also the wine is mature for a while, a long time, then that gives you good quality wine. Hallelujah. Mm. Uh, if anybody was an alcoholic here, you would know what I'm talking about. No, I'm joking here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, praise God. So pruning is important. Cutting is involved. The shoots are cut. And uh, there is a season for that. So we go through different seasons in our life. There might be a season now that you're going through that some cutting is happening in your life. 
pruning is happening in your life and you don't like it. You're saying, oh, no, Lord, I want answers. Just be patient. God is doing a good work. When the wine is pruned, it is for the best of the wine. It's, the, it's for, for its good. It's for bringing good fruit. And we, we, we don't like things when we, you know, God makes us uncomfortable in many ways. He challenges us. He convicts us. Like last Sunday, um, Misha was talking about the message, uh, what touched her. And it was, I believe, touching to everyone or for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, it was about not taking it easy, running to find Jesus, very to search Jesus, climbing on the tree before he comes there like Zacchaeus and all sorts of things. And so... Uh, uh, it was it was challenging last week, and I believe for some it was probably it was making making them uncomfortable because people don't want to run to look for Jesus. Mm -hmm. They want to have their own sort of uh, way or uh, uh, pace to go and find Jesus. Now, I don't know how many of you, uh, of course, you guys were here early, but I don't know how many of you really came here. And you know, I, I need to get to the home group today. It's, it's it's going to be like you know, I want to be your time. And I tried to do that, but because of family uh, uh, commitments I could not make it on time but my from the morning I've been thinking about the group I'm thinking of course I'm preaching so I'm preparing but I wanted to be here early I didn't want to miss the worship I, want, I was thinking about it all day all day and so it's something like that that we need to be thinking when it's a Tuesday evening we should be preparing right from the morning I'm going to be going mm -hmm. Sunday should be like it just mm -hmm. automatic uh, it, it should be a default thing in, within us that oh, it's Sunday morning, Saturday night or Saturday even in the morning as you wake up. Tomorrow is Sunday. I'm going to be in church. Hallelujah. Amen. So the pruning is very important. Uh, and also in the pruning time, it is, it, is, it is for the cleansing of the vine. And that is what God does. He cleanses us through His Holy Spirit when He's dealing with the issues of our life. And Holy Spirit starts working in such a way that He tries to make us more and more holy takes away the, the, the bad conceptions we have built in our mind, the, 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 the worries we have, the, the tensions we have, the, 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 the relationships that we might be into. Uh, if they are not good, maybe we are always angry, maybe we are fighting with our spouses, or maybe we are just wasting our money, whatever. God wants to do a good cleansing work in us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that's what pruning does. It, discipl it disciplines us. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so let us not be like some of the branches that would be rebelling. Let us not do that. Let us try to straighten up. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, let us be also like the branches that would support each other, help each other, build each other, protect each Amen. other, and, 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 and pray for each other and love each other. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, verse 3, uh, it says that... Uh, also, one thing is very important for us is that we need to be in the vine for the branches to bear fruit. And the good thing is about Jesus is that we are his branches and he wants to use us to bring the fruit. Because if there were no branches, there would have been no fruit. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Yeah. So God is using us to fulfill his agenda in this world. Mm -hmm. We are very much part of the vine. We, though we are not very much the trunk of the vine or the root. But as Jesus has been founded, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Our, our source comes from Him. And we will be able to bring... You can show the grapes now. We will be able to bring amazing fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be able to bring amazing fruit through our lives. Look at that. Yes. This is what God wants in the spirit sense. That your life will be a reflection of this. Also, I forgot to say during the pruning, also there is another uh, uh, pruning sort of that happens. Is that when the grapes are covered with leaves, the, the leaves have to be cut. Why? So that the, the grapes would sunshine. get the sunshine. Sunshine is very important. And so also, they are so careful that they don't, uh, they don't uh, uh, get all uh, the rid of all the, the leaves. They leave some, some leaves so that also you need to have some as well for a good balance. And so this is interesting how, how this... Uh, agricultural thing works with the, the, with the vine and so they leave some some leaves yeah and uh, I found very interesting about the sap <coughs> because uh, the sap is there are two types of saps and one is I'm just going to talk about only one because I don't want to complicate things here tonight uh, I'm not trying to become a, a farmer by the way yeah? or, uh, I'm just telling you <laughs> 
uh, yeah the sap the sap is uh, uh, the, the the one type of sap is called the xylem and uh, this is the type of sap that transports uh, transport tissue in vascular plants the other being the phloem which is p h l o e m and the basic function of you can show the sap by the way the function of xylem is to transport water from the roots to stems and leaves and also nutrients and that is what the holy spirit does this is the sap it, it is supporting the whole plant in other words taking the water and the nutrients to the leaves and the stems and giving them power giving them energy making them strong and then the <coughs> other other type brings the food to the to the to the uh, uh, every uh, 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 organ of the plant in other words so holy spirit is that for us that is the sap for us who gives us from jesus christ the water and the nutrients for us to be strong hallelujah Amen. so so this is beautiful and so you know when jesus said he was the wine he was trying to mean all these things and not just i am the wine and you are the branches because that's what how we understand it because we don't have agricultural background but the but the community the agricultural community which was a very much the jewish community they understood what he was trying to say they, they, they understood that uh, pruning is part of it they understood that you need to be bearing good fruit as part of the the, the wine and all sorts of things and so it's good to study sometimes and look deep into the word of god because it gives you a lot of lot of uh, uh, enlightenment and makes you understand things uh, in in a big way hallelujah Amen. so so this is what god is saying to us tonight that your life and my life is a life to bear fruit and as long as we are going to be planted or be part of the wine that is Jesus Christ, our life will be fulfilled and fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. Like you all know I'm married, but I'm not complete because I'm married. I'm complete because I know Jesus. Amen. I've got four beautiful kids. I enjoy them. They are a joy to me, but they don't make me complete. Mm. Of course, they give me satisfaction and joy that they're my kids and I enjoy them. But it's Christ who is making me feel, feel, feel complete. He gives me the buzz. He gives me the motivation. He gives me the drive. Hallelujah. Yes, I get encouragement from my wife. I get encouragement from my, my, my leadership, my friends and, 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 and brothers and sisters. That is all part of our, us as Christians. But my, uh, if there is a route, you can show me. But my strength, my joy, my excitement comes from being, it is basically when they were doing the pruning, but it doesn't matter. But but my joy and my strength comes because I am grounded and founded in Jesus Christ and his roots are strong. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are founded and you are grounded on Jesus Christ and you can have the same joy. Hallelujah. Amen. You can have the same excitement. You can have the same, same uh, 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 motivation and same passion Amen. to live life and to be fruitful like those grapes that I was showing. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So do you want to bear a lot of fruit? Yes. yes. Praise God. Then you need to allow yourself to be pruned. Yeah. We need to be allowing ourselves to be pruned. We should be tapping into the sap that is the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, to supply to us all that we need. And our source has to be only Jesus. There is nothing that will satisfy us. Fast cars, movies, or mm. uh, uh, great mansion, retirement homes, these are all good things. But you can have all that and if you sidetrack Jesus, mm. it's going to be boring. There's not going to be purpose and a meaning. But when we have Christ in our life as the number one, then we shall see that we will be a, such a blessing to so many by being fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. So in verse 4 it says, Remain in me. And I will remain in you just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the wine. Neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. So for that branch to bear that fruit, it's key and it's crucial that the branch will be remaining in the wine. Of course, a branch doesn't choose to remain in the wine. It is, it just, it's the flow of the wine. But we know what we are trying, what Jesus was trying to say is that we as branch, we need to be in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So that we will be, even when times, when difficult times will come, we will know that we are supported by a stronger wine and the roots are strong. And our father is the wine dresser. And if you see that 
beautiful greenery. He, he is a picture of a church. It's a picture of church in mm. order. That's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The wine. Mm. And Jesus is the wine and we are the branches. It's beautiful. That's how God intends it to be. Mm. Uh, then in, five, in verse 5 it says, I am the wine, you are the branches. And then look at this. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. So he started with fruit. He started with more fruit. And in verse 4, it is abundance. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you see the three levels of fruits? Yeah. And that is where we, we probably in our church, you can consider mm -hmm. you have done your leadership and you are now ready to enter into a ministry mm -hmm. where you will be where you will be bearing abundance of fruit Amen. through your life. Amen. You'll be going on missions. You'll be doing homeless ministry. You'll be doing evangelism ministry. You'll be doing uh, prison ministry. You'll be going to the nursing home. Mm -hmm. Or you'll be preaching uh, in home groups. Or you'll be preaching overseas. You'll be laying your hands. You'll have your own YouTube channel. Or you'll have your own social... Uh, uh, your, or your own thing, uh, a page on uh, Facebook or whatever of your ministry. Just giving you some examples, by the way. So that is going to be more abundance of fruit where you'll be doing great exploits for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what exactly God wants from our lives. That we will bear not just fruit, not just more fruit, but what does He want? He wants abundance. the abundance of it. Hallelujah. Amen. That's that's His that's His heart. That's the plan of God. And it says here, if you don't bear fruit, if you don't bear uh, much fruit, then you're not a true dis disciple, I think. Let me see. Uh, I remember reading that. Let me read 6. We will find it, uh, I think. Let me, yeah, let me read 6. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out. Uh, it's basically, he's cut. So, God wants to do that operation on us where also the, the pruning happens. We saw that big sort of Caesar type of thing, whatever it's called. And uh, it's for our good. So that the areas of our life that are not bearing fruit, God wants to take them out. God wants to just deal with these areas. Hallelujah. Amen. And so let us surrender today to the wine and to the wine dresser mm -hmm. as good branches. Let us straighten up today. Yes. Let us say, God, do good work. Prune me, Lord. If there are areas in my life, Lord, please help me so that I will not be stopped from bearing that abundance of fruit in my life. Mm -hmm. I want to be a blessing to my family. Number one, where you are placed by God, your family, your husband, your kids is the number one priority for everyone. Yeah. And then, then comes your parents, then comes your church, uh, which is uh, uh, important. Uh, for you will be the home group, in other words, and then the wider church church in general the holy nation church and then the bigger church if you want to be a blessing to them as well by going on missions and doing whatever you can and so it is important that we say god make me fruitful bear fruit in my life to abund uh, to the extent of being abundant hallelujah in jesus name uh, in six if anyone does not remain in me he's thrown out cut away like a broken off branch mm -hmm. and withers and dies and they gather such branches and throw them into the fire they and they are burned so let us mm -hmm. have our areas that are not pleasing to god burnt tonight hallelujah mm -hmm. let us put them in the fire anger in the fire selfishness in the fire pride in the fire uh whatever else coldness lukewarmness in the fire hallelujah mm -hmm. everything is going in the fire tonight hallelujah amen mm -hmm. in jesus name so if you remain in me, verse 7, this is what I think I'm, I'm coming to. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You see, many people try to take this out of context and they want to pray to God and they say, uh, uh, God says, whatever you ask, uh, it shall be given to you. Now I had a friend in, in, in Cyprus, he, he liked one girl and he was praying for it. And he was asking God for this uh, lady to be his wife, whatever. And it didn't happen. So what he did, he just gave up on the Lord. Because this woman didn't become his future wife, whatever. But my question to this young man was, Are you abiding in God? Are you remaining in the wine? 
Have you been grounded and planted in the wine? Because the word says when you are grounded and planted in the wine, then God will give you the desires of your heart. And if that lady was for him, then he will have got it. But the key was to be grounded in the Lord. Because he was not grounded in the Lord, because he was not uh, in, 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 in the wine himself, but he wanted something just like that. And it doesn't happen. Yes, we, we also know that everything that we would be praying for, sometimes God doesn't give us. There are three answers God gives us. Yes, no, and wait. So we need to accept that. We can't, we can't say God, if he doesn't give us, then God is not interested in us. God has got something better if he's not giving us that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we must be, first of all, grounded, planted strongly into the vine by being a good, good uh, uh, branch. Verse 8, this is the one. My father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit, look at that. When you bear much fruit, which is the abundance, the third level of uh, 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 produce and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. So he says here, when you bear much fruit, who are you? Not just a <coughs> disciple, you are what? A true disciple. So if you want to be really true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we should be bearing much, much fruit. fruit. We should be bearing abundant fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's in who was said. You can check it uh, 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 for yourselves. So let me read it again, because Amplified makes it a little bit complicated when you're reading. My father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourself to be my true disciples. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So let us take this as a challenge to bear more abundant, much fruit in Jesus' name. I know there are many who are bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. And there might be some who are bearing more fruit. But now God is saying, and he's asking of us, to come to the next level of bearing abundant fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a challenge for us to bear abundant fruit. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say in verse 9. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Now the, the, there is a shift here if you are noticing. He was talking about the wine. He was talking about the branches. He was talking about the fruit. And now there is a little bit of a shift. Let's look at the shift. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Now he's not talking about real, the branches and the, the wine and uh, nothing of that sort of. But he's moving on to, now he's directly talking to the disciples about, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teachings, teaching, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and, re and remain in his love. I have told you the thing so that my joy and delight may be in you. And that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. And that is what God was trying to uh, teach the disciples with the picture of the abundant fruit overflowing. And that his joy would be complete when we have that abundant fruit. But he was also trying to reassure uh, and re-establish because uh, very soon he is going to be after this being arrested and then they take him and then we know the story the Lord was crucified so he's saying some very powerful things to remain in my love and make my joy complete so when we remain in him God's joy overflows he's overflowing with joy for you and for me when we are remaining in his love his joy is absolutely overflowing so let us continue to be in his love and obeying his commands hallelujah Amen. that is very important and then in verse 12 this is my commandment this is the last scripture and 13 this is my commandment that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another just as i have loved you no one has greater love no stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends you are my friends if you keep on doing what I am commanding you to do. Hallelujah. So Amen. it is just that picture of the branches trying to support each other. <coughs> we need to be looking out for each other. Hallelujah. Amen. We should be encouraging the fruit of each other. Hallelujah. Amen. We should be joyful when somebody is uh, giving good fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. I always say this in the church. When somebody gets a visa, you should be happy for it so that... If you have a problem with your visa, you are next in the queue. 
But when somebody gets a visa and you look at yourself and say, Oh, how did he get it? And I didn't get mine. I have been in the church longer than him or her and he just came and he had his breakthrough. Praise God, whoever comes last or first, they get their blessing. Thank God for Hallelujah. it because your blessing is coming. Mm -hmm. You are the next one Hallelujah. to be blessed. Hallelujah. And so let us let us be uh, let us learn from this uh, wine situation that Jesus is the wine. He's the best wine. That the Father is the wine dresser. And let's, let us not tap into the dry wines. There are a lot of dry wines trying to attract us. Mm -hmm. They want us to suck our, uh, 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 our energy, our money, our joy, our peace. They want to attract us. But let us come and be grounded and let us continue to be in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because when we are in Jesus... Everything that comes out of that will be beautiful. It will not be easy sometimes. There will be pruning. There will be hard times. There will be tough times. There will be testing times. There will be sad times sometimes. We have to all go through uh, some things, you know, once in a while. That is something God uses for us to become more stronger in Him. Hallelujah. Amen. And maybe you're going through something today. Mm. Just say, God, please help me to come through this. Please, God, help me. You're pruning me. You are doing something. Amen. You're cutting me. And I can feel the cut. Amen. I can feel the wound. But it's going to be good. Because Amen. that wound that has been opened is for your good. Because there is some infection maybe there. There is some stuff there that God wants to just to root it out. And just deliver and set us free and make something good. And when that wound will be healed, let me tell you, you won't even know. The difference that whether there was a scar or, 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 or if there was a wound. Because it would be absolutely made 